Hello and welcome to Alexpo and it is time for part 2 of our FM Wonder Kids squad at South End United. If you missed part 1, I took 25 of the best Wonder Kids on Football Manager 2022 and I put them all at non-league side South End United and I locked them into contracts for 20 years. No matter what happens, they were all going to spend 20 years at South End United with the overall goal of reaching the Premier League, winning trophies, winning European trophies and becoming the best team around with an exciting crop of youngsters as they journey through the footballing world. So far, things have they've gone okay. When we left things in part one, we were solid in the top half of the Premier League and we had just qualified for Europe for the first time but these next 10 years are absolutely crucial the next four years are probably the most important we've got players at the peak of their powers the likes of phil ford and you've got erling Haaland, really at like the elite point there should be for the specific age obviously it's 10 years into the future but by the time we get the end of this simulation they'll be old and they'll be wanting to retire these next few years are crucial for any success this experiment is going to have. So let's dive back in and see what the next 10 years have got for our FM Wonder Kids at South End United. Okay, this is where we left things in 2031, 10 years into the future, and you can see there are South End United in 7th place in the Premier League. Just two goals denied them a place in the Europa League, but it's okay because they have qualified for the Europa Conference League. They're finally in Europe, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to simulate two years in the future. We'll do five lots of two years just because it's easier because of maths and all that. Let's go two years into the future and see where things are in 2033. Right, here we are two years into the future, 2033, and Southend United have just missed out on a top half place in the Premier League. They have came 12th with 50 points on the board. They were six shy of Leicester, who got into the Europa Conference League. In terms of personal performances, Erling Haaland's had another great year. The top scorer in the Premier League who is an actual player, only beaten by Regen, Antonio Carrera, who got 20 goals for Fulham, where they came 6th, which is pretty impressive. But as you can see, they're Erling Haaland, the second top scorer in the Premier League, and the only South End player to feature at the top of the charts. How have South End been getting on? Who is their manager? When we left things in 2031, it was Nigel Pearson, and it still is Nigel Pearson, which is quite strange considering he replaced. Luis Enrique. Don't know what's gone on there, but, but that's what's happened, okay? How did they get on the previous season in the Premier League? Let's have a wee look. In 2032, they came 7th as well. So once again, they were qualifying for Europe. So they've had two back-to-back -back seasons in Europe. Let's just check they did actually qualify for Europe. We'll go to the previous season, 2031-32. They didn't actually, although they came 7th, and Newcastle have clearly won a cup, and that's got them into the Europa Conference League. Let's check South End out. I want to see how they got on in Europe last season. Playing at the Kevin Meyer Park, Kevin Meyer was the manager who guided South End to the Premier League. So they were in the Europa Conference League. They got into a group stage with Shamrock Rovers, Sion, and Ferrever. Saying that wrong, sorry. Did they make it through? They did. They made it through the group of the second knock around where they beat Wolfsburg. Then they beat Atalanta. This is pretty impressive. But in the semi-finals, they lost to Dynamo Kiev, which is... That's really disappointing considering, I mean, Wolfsburg, not a bad team. Atalanta, a great side. I mean, a Champions League side. They beat them 4-2 on aggregate. But in the semi-finals, they were beaten by the Ukrainians. And when we look at the FA Cup, they were lost in the quarterfinals. When we look at the Carabao Cup, they lost in the second round. So they didn't win any cup competitions that season. And this year, they didn't win any cup competitions either. Losing in the fourth round of the Carabao Cup to Man City on penalties. And then the FA Cup quarterfinals, losing to Liverpool. Let's have a little look at the team that ended the season. Because this looks like it's been the team for the whole year, really. And it's a, it's a great team. Martin van der Voort in goal. Timber right back. Davies left back, Gavardiol and Nianzu sent halves. Then centre midfielders, you've got Bellingham and Pedri. An attacking three of Saka, Foden and Ansu Fati. And leading the line, Erling Haaland. Still no, no appearances for Fana and Makoko because they, they haven't got a work permit. It looks like it's just been a core of players who've played pretty much every game. When you look at the options on the bench, the only one who started, eh, Jamal Musal is a common starter. He's missed out on the final game. Then other than him, you've got... Tino Livramento starting 16 games. Those are the only two players on the bench 
who started double figure games. Nigel Pearson seems to have a quite a settled squad and a squad that has finished 12th in the Premier League. We've had another takeover as well, a new chairperson, Nicholas Gascoigne. I hope he's uh, very happy in his new position. Pedri the club legend, as we mentioned before, the only club legend so far. But in 2033, a lot of these players, when we have a little look at their ages, a lot of them are in their 30s. The youngest, Makoko, who isn't playing at 28, then the only player younger than 30 other than Makoko is Jude Bellingham at 29. The rest are 30 and above. You've got Phil Ford in there at the age of 33. He's still doing well, he's, he's, he's still playing well, but I mean, his influence is going to wane, just like some of these other players who are coming into the 30s. I mean, just because you're in your 30s doesn't mean you're past it, but I mean, when you've got a squad full of players who are 35 and whatnot, it's not really great, is it? I mean, it, they can't be that energetic. I know these are wonder kids, but they're just, they'll be wonder pensioners in, in a matter of time. But let's go two more years into the future, let's go to 2035. Okay, here we are, 16th of June, 2035, and things are, uh, well, it seems as though they're kind of on the decline for South End United. They've came 11th with 48 points. But they should have finished 7th with 57 points. That's because they went to administration and were docked 9 points. The financial wars hitting South End United once again because I cocked things up when I did this experiment. Instead of giving every player £50 a week, you've got Erling Haaland there earning £240,000 a week. Let's have a look at the players and the money they are on. We'll go to contract. Oh God, what am I doing? There we go. Ansu Fati. What? £2.4 million a week? A week? A week? £2.4 million. That's more than all of us will probably make in our lifetime combined. Little Ansu Fatty at 32 years old is making that in a week. Then you've got Phil Foden, 1.1 million pounds. There's some clauses in these contracts which are absolutely disastrous for this team. Oh God, it's no wonder they went into administration and finished 11th. How did they get on the season prior? Well, they actually came 6th, which was their best season ever in the Premier League. So they've been in Europe, I think. We'll have a little look. Now the manager is Unai Emery. They are now having good evenings all round after Nigel Pearson left on the 29th of December. Unai Emery now the man in charge since the 5th of April 2035. So it was actually Nigel Pearson who got Southend United into the Europa League. How have they got on? They were in a group with Levski, Borussia Mönchengladbach and Red Star. And they made it through that group. They beat Red Star Belgrade in the second knockout round. The quarterfinals, they beat Galatasaray. And then it was the semis where they lost to Liverpool. And they also lost the semi-final in the FA Cup to Chelsea. So this South End United team have came narrowly close to some silverware for the first time. Other than the you know the titles they won going up to the, to the top flight. And the Papa John's Trophy. Let's not forget the Papa John's Trophy. They're still getting that lifetime supply of pizza. Which Ansu Fatty's probably scranning every week on his £2.4 million a week wages. Goodness sake, man. So they went into administration on the 8th, on the 6th, sorry, of August 2034 at the start of this season. Then they came out of administration. The youth category's gone down to category 3. Things aren't going very well off the pitch here for Southend United. But as for their youngsters, how are they getting on? Let's have a look at the selection info. And the star player has been Phil Foden, the eldest player in the squad, with an average rating of 7.4 rate. That man is maturing like a fine wine. A lot of goals in the team too. You've got Ansu Fati hitting double figures, Erling Haaland hitting double figures, as did Pedri and Jamal Musiala. Has the system changed under Unai Emery? It's back to being a 4-3-3. But I mean, there's not a lot you can do really with this team. It's the same players it's been for... How many years are we on now? 14 years. Things maybe are getting a bit stale. Everyone's at least playing some football. It looks like there's been a bit more rotation from Unai Emery. Then again, he wasn't in charge for most of the season, so I'm chatting out my arse, to be honest with you. Bikayo Sack has not been involved as much this season. Mason Greenwood's still disappointing. 
and Yusuf Demir. Absolute waste of time. I, I do feel sorry for Fafana and Makoko because I mean, those guys could be having wonderful careers, and they're, and they're just stuck. They're stuck there doing nothing. It's like they've just been left at the training ground to rot in the stationary cupboard. Do Premier League teams have stationary cupboards? Probably. Nah, I bet they don't, you know. No, maybe they do. Let's say they do. Well, that's where they are. But perhaps things are going to be slowly on the decline from now. Well, no, I'm, I'm talking rubbish again because the performances clearly have been good. And if it wasn't for the points deduction, they'd be playing in Europe again. But they have been docked points. Because Ansu Fati is earning £2.4 million a week, for goodness sake. I've got a feeling things are going to get worse and worse from now on. Let's go two more years into the future. Okay, here we are, 2037, and the decline is upon us. Southend United finishing 15th with 45 points on the board. Now managed by Sean Dyche. What happened to Unai Emery? Well, he was sacked on the 20th of December, 2035. Didn't even last a full year in charge, and he's been replaced by Sean Dyche. It's weird, we'll go from Spanish manager to English manager, from Spanish manager to English manager. How did they get on? In the season prior, well, they came 12th, and they're in debt, which is quite bad. Well, we docked any points. Let's have a little look. We were, we once again docked nine points, which would have put us only a few places higher, actually, in ninth. What are the wages like nowadays? I mean, Christ, surely they can't still be going up. E my God, they are. Ansu Fatty, 3.7 million pounds a week. This is an absolute liberty. And he's playing up front now, the lucky devil, 4-4-2, him and Erling Haaland leading the line. A little change in tactics there from Sean Dyche, but it doesn't look like it's delivered any kind of results. There's so few players averaging more than a 7. The only players who've got a 7 and above is Tangai Nianzu, Josko Gvardiol, Jamal Musala, Pedri Bellingham, Foden, Haaland and Ansu Fati. Other than that, it's been quite appalling to be honest with you. Quite a few players barely featuring now, Ilish Mariba hasn't started. Yusuf Demir hasn't started, Sven Botman hasn't started, and the two players who can't get work permits aren't allowed to start. Benoit Badiasil, he's only started two games, Mason Greenwood only one start. It's all going Pete Tong, to be honest with you, and the morale is absolutely appalling, except for Erling Haaland, who's, who's quite happy with his 17 goals. Oh, it's all going so, so wrong. A new chairman again, chairperson, sorry. Youth category's gone up, which isn't good because it had just gone down before it's all going so so wrong let's go to 2039 it's it's a sad sad ending to this simulation but it's kind of what i expected considering the players are i mean how old are they now i mean look at that the youngest player is 32 jude bellingham's 33 then you've got a 37 year old phil Foden. i mean it's a recipe for disaster man why did i send them there for 20 years this was a stupid idea let's go to 2039 right here we are 2039 18 years of this experiment and as you can see South End are in the championship and they've been docked 12 points they've came 10th with 70 points on the board and if they'd had those 12 points they would have had 82 and they would have been in the playoffs they would have had a chance to go straight back up to the Premier League but it hasn't happened and it looks like they're going to end this whole experiment in the championship because they're going to keep getting docked points. It's just going to happen. They've still got two more years and it's, it's going to get worse. I can just sense it. Pedri, though, is doing well. Though, the second best player in the championship. And Van der Voort got 17 clean sheets. So that, that's something. Who's the manager nowadays? It's David Carew, who's a regen. Could be anyone. Sean Dyche was sacked. Then Thiago Motta was sacked. And now it is David Carew. What happened when they went down? Let's have a little look. They came 19th in the Premier League. And I'm going to have a little look at the table just to see what went down. So last season there, they were 19th in the league, 29 points. And because they went into an administration, docked 9 points, that relegated them. If they hadn't been docked those 9 points, they would have had 38 and they would have been fine. So basically, it's all Ansu Fati's fault. Ansu Fati, who is now earning... How much money is he earning? 4.4 million a week. No one's ever earned that in the history of anything, other than maybe Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos. Oh, this, the finances have absolutely ruined the final years of this experiment. You've got there Phil Ford and 39. I mean, all the players are deep into the 30s. They're like a pub team at this rate. 
and they are in the Sky Bet Championship. Fail to comply with financial fair play regulations. That's why they've been docked points. The club youth setup has been scrapped. They've got so little money. It's all an absolute shambles. And unsurprisingly, there's no mention of any trophies either. Let's do the final two years. Let's go to 2041 and end this sorry state of an experiment on a sour, sour note. Right, here we are for the final time, the 14th of June, 2041. Our squad of wonder kids are about to leave and they are leaving without a manager. South End United looking for a manager and they are sitting in the championship still. So they've spent two more years in the championship. Where did they come? Pedri's not even one of the best players in the division, but Jude Bellingham is, sorry, Jude Bellingham, the best player in the league with a 7.7. .7. Where did they come? They came 17th. 55 points 20 clear the relegation zone so it wasn't that bad they haven't been docked any which is at least a bit of progress but Jude Bellingham now the captain replacing Erling Haaland who's 40 years old I mean look at the age of these players I mean there's a couple of kids come through the academy ignore McCorko Jude Bellingham 37 the youngest and there's Phil Forden at 41 years old is he still playing quite well no he's not average ring 6.61 for 42 championship appearances. It's been a sad state of affairs at the end of this experiment. Who's the manager's been? Last guy was Marcelo Miguel Leano, and he was sacked as well. It, it, it's all gone so, so wrong. Where did they come last season? They came 20th in the championship, and this time they've came 17th. They've been into administration again. They've filled with financial fair play regulations. It's, it's just been awful. What money's Ansu Fati on nowadays? 7.25 million pounds a week. Let's have a little look at the selection info. And the only one who's really starred is Jude Bellingham. 7.68, which is brilliant. Jamal Musial has been good, and so has Tangai and Nianzu. A few others there doing quite well. Pedri's been a consistent source of stardom. And thank goodness Ansu Fati's been all right. 7.04, but not very good, considering he's a man earning 7 million pounds a pissing week, for goodness sake. As for the rest of them, Age has just caught up with them. And things have got worse and worse and worse. So this FM Wonder Kids squad experiment just hasn't gone very well at all. Slightly hindered by the fact that I ruined the club's finances with doing something wrong. And then you had Ansu Fatty earning millions of pounds a week. But even then, they still didn't win any trophies. All they won, the biggest honour they won, was the Papa John's Trophy in 2023 all these players have got to show for all their hard work is a lifetime supply of papa john's pizza and i don't even know if that's a good thing because i've never had a papa john's in my life you can see from this 20 years we start there in 2021 22 they won the national league it was an incredible rise an incredible rise promotion after promotion even with financial wars they got to the premier league they were solid they were a top half team they even got to europe they got to a semi-final of a europa league then ansu fatty earned millions of pounds a week and drained the club's finances and it's been a steady decline ever since it's been a roller coaster with a very sudden ending this could have been a great experiment and once again i have cocked it up but then again these players are in the 40s, man. What was to be expected? Has this squad underperformed? Yes. Did I expect more? Yes. Did I get things wrong? Yes. But have we had fun? Yes, we have. And that is the most important thing. Let's leave it there. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. As always, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to Alexpo. And until next time, we will see you around.